Bung Pod. Welcome back, Blind Wonder Boy. And we got Jazzy J. Jazzy! <laughs> What is a bung? The hole of the barrel is called a bung hole. <laughs> inside the bung hole is called a bung. Wine with mayhem. That's what it's about. All right. Welcome back. Welcome back to the bung pod. It's your boy, Ian King, a.k.a. Wine Wonder Boy. I have my co-host with me, Jazzy J. Hello, everybody. Jazzy! <laughs> Way too much. We out today. here. <laughs> Um, it's just me and Jazz that run this whole pod, so if you can, go give us a five-star review on any podcast platform that you're listening to this on. Also, say hi to us, DM us at Official Bung Pod, Instagram, TikTok, whatever that you got. So we have a fun episode today. We have a good friend here. She just opened up a wine shop in Spokane. We have Julia Carlson. <laughs> <laughs> Hello! <laughs> How are you doing today? So good. How are you? Oh, wonderful. Good. I'm going to get comfortable over here. Yeah. Okay. Um, I did bring a wine. Yes. Um, I was going to open this with mm. a wine key, but this is a little mm. screw top bad boy. There we boy. go. Yeah. Yes. This one I got from Dusted Valley BFM, which could stand for Big Fucking Merlot or... <laughs> That's what we like. Bad fucking mama. That's what I am. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, Thank you. And we also in the in behind the scenes over here we have Larissa, which helped design your my space, your your yes, space, your our wine new shop, bottle shop. Yep. Which is awesome. Yeah. I I love design. I I do like aesthetically. I just like aesthetics a lot, but I'm just not that great at creating I'm not aesthetically either. pleasing things. I have a lot of creativity, I feel like, and good ideas, but I can't ever bring them to them. fruition. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I totally so feel what that. kind of what kind of wines do you gravitate towards? Do you, um, you're more like Bordeaux? Do you like Rhone, Burgundy? I do love Rhone varietals. I feel like my, you know, I used to be one of those people who thought they didn't like a whole entire category of wine. Mm-hmm. So in, in 2018, 2019, I still told myself I didn't like white wine. Right. And then I had the Cardis Grenache Blanc Ooh. on yeah, a baby. 2020 COVID trip. We couldn't even go into the space. We yeah. just were buying bottles like through our car window. <laughs> and... <laughs> So we, like and, <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. So we stayed in Chile in that weekend. We had our family with us, and we bought the bottle. We didn't drink any wine when we were here because we couldn't go into wineries, and so we yeah. weren't right. whatever we were doing. We were, um, you know, making cocktails or seltzers, whatever. And so it wasn't until I got home that I tried the wine, and that wine like totally opened up my whole entire palate and really led me on this discovery of white wine. Yeah. Um, so I love the Rhone varietals, all that to say, but my favorite wine to drink is anything bubbly, Pat Nat. I'm a hoe for a Pat Nat. Ooh, nice. Um, yeah. So I like the funky things. Um, my favorite bottle right now, if we're getting into that, I'll mm-hmm. just offer that up. Yeah. Is the Sage Rat Pat Nat Rouge. Okay. I've heard a lot about Sage Rat. Yeah. And so many people have asked me to, you know, bring them on the podcast which i yes, want to do absolutely them and also sonder i want them both from the pod. i love sonder yeah, I do that um, as well. and I, I feel like they have similar winemaking styles yeah they do yeah. and i'd love to do an in-person one that would be the best because be really we do remote podcasts too but i just love in-person dynamics a lot more yeah. you kind of get a bullshit more yeah and yeah. so you're not going off of a list of questions you know yeah mm-hmm. i like that a lot but yeah, yeah. so what's your experience in the wine industry. In the wine yeah. industry. How did you get started? Okay. So I've been um, – what I consider myself is a longtime consumer mm-hmm. in the industry slash hobbyist. <laughs> yeah. So our very first trip to Chelan was almost 10 years ago. So my nine-year-old son is almost 10. Okay. And the first time we came to Chelan was when he was an infant. He was four months old. And we lived in Seattle at the time, so it was a really easy way to just come away for the weekend. And so on that trip, we bought – we were still pretty young. I think I was 24 at the time and we'd been married maybe a year. And so 
it was like our first bottle of good wine that we ever bought and it was at Nefarious okay. and it cost yeah. us 40 bucks, which yeah. at the time like still felt like quite a lot being newly married with this new baby. I had quit my job to stay home with him. Mm. Um, and so after our trip here for that very first time and that initial purchase, like I held that empty bottle, I saved it through like many, many moves. I finally <laughs> did just get rid of it a few years ago. Um, but that kind of started us off on the Washington wine discovery. Um, and I never really branched out into international or in a way that I have with Washington wine. Yeah. So it's been about 10 years since we've been exploring Washington wine and really watching all the regions grow. And so we've been to Chelan and Manson now more times than I can count, um, (laughs) and everywhere else as well. But I guess for, for me and for how my husband and I were exploring wine, it was, it was the most relevant to us. Like this affects our daily life, right? Totally. Um, and so I can have respect for all the other wine regions and growing regions, but nothing is more relevant than what we're doing in Washington. And so it just kind of has just over the years, like it's been a crescendo of more interest, you know, a deeper understanding of wine and the wine industry and wanting to learn more. And then, um, my kids are both in elementary school now. My background is in public health. I have a master's. Okay. Okay. In public health as well, and I just knew I didn't want to go back to any sort of corporate wellness, which is what I was yeah. working previously, um, and I didn't want to do a nine-to-five. I didn't want to play by someone else's rules, and so mm-hmm. my husband said, find a way to make this tax deductible, and I said, checkmate. Here we go. <laughs> Try me. Hey, yeah. Let's go. I can do yeah. that. That's easy. So here we are. That's light work. With a bottle That's shop and work. a wine club now. Yeah. 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 That's so yep. fun. Yeah. yeah. By the way, I loved um, – <laughs> I just thought of this right now, but I loved how you rolled in with a shot of Malibu rum. Mm-hmm. It was awesome. Okay. It's on camera. It's Hold right on. there. It is. However, <laughs> let me just – She's like, let's yeah. go. Today's a fun day. Let it's a Sunday fun day right now. Let me disclaimer, though, that this is not what I would – we don't shoot Malibu rum. I'm looking at Larissa, who's off camera. We don't. Here's the thing. We were on our way. We left really early this morning. Yeah, and what time did you get in town? 11. Okay. Yeah. Damn. And so we were at this gas, sta- gas station in like Banks Lake area, and I'm like, let's get shots. You know? <laughs> the day was just getting ahead of me already. I was just ready to party and have fun. Yeah. This is not what we typically shoot. I just feel like I need to make the disclaimer that. What do you usually, what's tequila. your normal? Tequila. I'm tequila? a tequila girl or, too. Or seasonally, crown peach or crown apple. Okay. 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 Yeah. So six months of the year, God, we I do crown, had some apple. crown apple. Yeah. I hate peach. But. So for oh. tequila, do you do um, <clears throat> reposado or what's Mm-mm. your. Typically silver. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Yep. Um, you know, I like all sorts of tequila, but yeah. I'm not going to be picky, but I typically yeah. gravitate towards silver. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I like a good sipping tequila. Yeah. Or I've never shots. sipped it. I just, you know, down, down the, the hatch. hatch. Down the, <laughs> down Cheers the hatch. To that. Cheers to that. <laughs> Same way, <wavelength>. Um <laughs> Hey, so you haven't explained our wine and all that good yeah. stuff. Yeah, so this is uh, Dusted Valley BFM. This is a Bordeaux blend of mostly Merlot, I believe. Let me double check on the back label here. It is um, 66% Merlot, 28 Cab Sauv, and 6% Petite Verdot. I, I get that 6%, mm-hmm. man. Yep. Um, <laughs> I love this wine. I got it because I visited uh, their tasting room in Woodenville, and I thought this was – I don't typically gravitate towards Bordeaux. I just don't. I uh, just kind of think they're boring a little bit. But I love old world Bordeaux, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. right bank, left bank, and this reminded me of a right bank I was gonna say, uh, Bordeaux right bank. style um, blend. Because it is has a lighter touch on it, the tannin's a little bit more rustic, mm-hmm. I feel like, on it. And so it really gave me that kind of like Bordeaux uh, style. And so I was mm-hmm. like, fuck yeah, I'm going I'm to grab a bottle of this guy yeah. for, the, for the pod. Um, they're really awesome mm-hmm. people, too. They have a really cool story. It's owned by two uh, couples, and they just do a great job down in Walla Walla. So, mm-hmm. yeah. I'm going there next weekend for a spring release. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, because yeah, I already carried the Boomtown line yeah. in the shop. Yeah. And so I'm going to go to Dusted Valley and 
see the estate and everything. Oh, how perfect. I know. When it's I like walked in, I was like, it really was. Huh. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So what, what would you say the tasting notes are on this? Okay, here we go. Or do you want to try? No. No. <laughs> Don't put me on the spot. <laughs> I get too nervous. <laughs> That was a hard pass. <laughs> hard pass. <laughs> uh, it's very red fruited on the nose. Also, there's a lot more floral components, uh, red florals, purple florals. I think too a little bit. There's no hint of like. Is there's no bombardment on the nose of uh, French oak. Hmm. Although I get a hint of it in there. Got that vanilla clovey kind of nutmeggy on the Does nose. Have a little- um, but it's not overpowering. It's not your typical kind of like Napa style, big Bordeaux style uh, that they do. And on the palate, I'm just enjoying it to sober me up. <laughs> <laughs> Drinking wine to sober yourself up. That's great. Yeah. Um, tannins are rustic. They're not trying to rip mm. your mouth apart. They are. They're kind they do of have a rustic. They're a little grainy, little yeah, a little mess. rustic. Yeah. Um, there's also a good amount of plum and that black currant in mm. there. Also a tinge of like uh, fennel or black licorice. I think that comes from the petite verdot. It's yeah. more a like, concentrated that flavor. Six percent, baby. Six percent, bitch. Uh. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is fucking good. Um, good job, Dusty mm-hmm. Valley. I'll direct this question to you. How yes. do you feel about screw caps? I love screw caps. Okay. Yeah, I love mm-hmm. them. Um, for me, you know, it's it's a boat wine. It's a beach wine. It's a car bar. Exactly. <laughs> Before a concert wine. Yeah. Yes. I have no problem with the screw tap. Screw cap. Yeah. <laughs> screw <laughs> top. <laughs> screw cap. Shout out to yeah. screw taps one time. Yeah, and you know what? It's. Yeah. It's. <sighs> They're convenient. They're convenient. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I am all for alternative mm-hmm. vessels for wine. Like, yes. I love the cans. Mm-hmm. I love the screw caps. I love the kegs on tap. Wine on tap is yeah. great. Yeah. Um, it's. I think it's really dope. And it really brings, I guess, more of a younger crowd where it's kind of mm-hmm. taking all, like, the bougie shit out of wine, which mm-hmm. is kind of what we try yeah. to do with this pod. It's right. like we love wine and wine education and wine people. We just hate the pretentiousness that it comes with sometimes. Yeah. And um, while you can appreciate high-quality wines and appreciate those experiences, um, people do not necessarily connect with it because mm-hmm. it is a very intimidating uh, culture to get into yeah. because, of, is, because totally. of the pretentiousness, right? And so um, it's kind of like when you go to a super bougie ass coffee shop, and which I fucking love those, by the way. Big fan, <laughs> big fan of Artisan um, Coffee Roasters. But you go in there, <laughs> like when I first went into one of those shops, everyone was fucking hipster. Everyone like designed why everyone looked awesome, like you know aesthetically. Yeah. And I was mm-hmm. like, damn, like I'm Head super, in- I'm super intimidated by this place right now. And I didn't know what to order. They have, have like a bunch of drinks that are, you know, in Italian or whatever. And you're just like, all right, I don't have no idea what to get, but this smells great in here. And I want to drink <laughs> I something. Want I want yeah, that. I want yeah. that. I want that. Whatever this smell Which is. Which is cool. Once you yeah. just go to the, the person, you're just like, okay, so what would you recommend? This is what I usually drink. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Same thing with wine. You Same know? thing with wine. Same thing with wine. Yeah. I love the screw caps too because the technology has come such mm-hmm. uh, so far, yeah. especially the past like five to ten years. Um, in the beginning, screw caps, like New Zealand was doing it, mostly with like Sauvignon Blanc, yeah. like mm-hmm. Oyster Bay, Marlboro Sauvignon Blancs, which I get because it really keeps a freshness in there. Um, but how they started to um, integrate the technology of breathability within the screw caps is mm-hmm. really cool, especially for red wines. And I love it because it gives access Easy mm-hmm. ease of access, you know, because yeah. you don't always when you're on to... the way to concert. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> well, that's what I was going to say is it's yeah. accessibility. Yeah. So if I want to incorporate wine into my daily life, which I typically do, <laughs> yeah. I'm not bringing a corkscrew. No, on the boat, I'm not bringing a corkscrew mm-hmm. to the beach. I'm well, not especially bringing. When you have kids and you're yeah thinking of a million other things. Exactly. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, so, I'm the kind of guy who's always prepared. So I feel like I always have, have a course crew in my backpack. I have one in even the, the equipment car. bag. I have one in the car. Yeah. I have one on my keychain. Um, I, I have, can appreciate that. I got one yeah. everywhere. Yeah. yeah. I got can appreciate one everywhere. that. Yeah. Yeah. 
And I'm the person that just never has one. <laughs> well, I brought a bunch of wines camping yeah, one time and you I completely forgot yeah, exactly. a corkscrew. And I was like, fuck, how am I going to open these? And so one of my buddies, I just put the bottle in the back of his like hiking boot and slammed it against a tree. So oh. the cork would oh, pop yeah. open. Oh my! It worked. I spilled wine all over me, but it worked, and yeah, I was like, you "Great!" Do what you gotta do. And after the camping trip, I found the corkscrew in my glove compartment. I was like, "I knew I fucking oh, had one you somewhere." Had it. Yeah, that's the worst. Son of a nutcracker. We okay. A little bit of a tangent, but okay. we have a little cabin on the northern tip of Lake Roosevelt. Okay. And when we're not there, we uh, Airbnb it out, and so we had a renter call us, which. Isn't totally typical. When any renter calls me, I'm like, immediate panic, what's wrong? You know, one guy was like, we have a bottle of wine we want to open. The whole town is closed down. Can you tell me where your corkscrew is? And we're like, shit, I took it home with me (laughs) on accident. It was in one of our coolers, so I brought it home. And we felt so bad. But so I texted him the next day and I said, I hope everything else, you know, about your stay was great. Yeah. Uh, we own a wine shop. There's no excuse why we didn't have a corkscrew out there. I'm so sorry. I hope you found a way to open your wine. Did he reply? Yeah, he gave us a five star review, but okay. that's not the point. Say, it's did just you get a one star. No, it was just like <laughs> one star review. One those, no, no, yeah. there's no wine key in the cabin. We just we need to be Fuck better about. Yeah, <laughs> wine accessibility. And okay, they own a wine shop. Yeah, yeah. And they own a wine shop. Like no excuse. Inexcusable. Inexcusable. It's just ridiculous. Really wanted that five star. <laughs> so. I just strive to be more like you. Have them everywhere. I try. I don't mm-hmm. always, you know, have them, but yeah. I, I really try. Mm-hmm. Um. So the idea mm-hmm. of the wine shop. Yes. How did this all, besides getting it written off on your taxes, yeah, <laughs> come to fruition? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So the retail wasn't necessarily in the plan from the get go. Okay. That was what more was the original plan. The original plan was what I launched the business as, which was a curated Washington wine club. So what I wanted to do, which was really the crux of it was when Eric told me, Eric's my husband, he said, find a way to make nine wine clubs tax deductible. Um, which of course now we only belong to two being in the industry, which he still has a problem with, but we're going to let it slide. So, so he, the, has, he has a problem with having them or not having enough. Having them. Having He them. doesn't think we have a need for them anymore. Because you have the wine shop. Right, which right. is fair. But anyways. Um, but still, you got to have one. <laughs> right. Yeah. So Supporting the industry. I agree. Yeah. So the idea was to create a streamlined wine club in which people could commit to knowing their upfront commitment in terms of um, financial costs because we decided on a set, a fixed price for each of our club tiers. And we wanted to be able to taste people all over the state so they're not committed from, to one winemaking style, to one grape growing region, um, to one particular type of wine. And so we really wanted to provide people with a diverse experience of wine to be able to either grow their own cellars or just have wine on hand any given yeah. day that they can feel like they can open, right? And yeah. not have to save for a special occasion. Um, so we launched the business right off the bat. We got a a lot of our friends and family signed up. And so we had this really cute little club following at the time. Mm -hmm. And we quickly realized like we weren't going to be able to grow the club the way we wanted to, unless we had a physical space for people to come to. And so my husband was driving by the space that we ended up renting in September. He kind of pitched it to me. I said, let's explore. And three days later, we had the keys to this uh, building that was built in the 40s and had been um, a previously had been previously inhabited by a train hobby store. Oh, okay. For like 40 plus years. Yeah. Okay. So October, you know, we didn't really intend to like saddle ourselves with this whole renovation. We already had our whole fall planned out. We were taking a family vacation. And then as you know, like holidays and everything pick up so we didn't really start working on the space until early november is when we like really started hitting it hard and we were supposed to be open by mid-december um and that didn't happen so we ended up opening mid-february and why didn't it happen because our license got objected to by a church and and so wait so a church Hmm. objected to your liquor license yes so is it a full do you have a full do you also sell liquor there no, as well? we so have the beer wine. and wine specialty shop license. And so any school or church within a 500 feet uh-huh. walking distance right. had the opportunity to object. And so our liquor licensor had to reach out to that church and say, this is what's going in. 
500 feet away from you. And so um, they ob- they chose to object and they objected with all the CDC statistics about why alcohol is terrible for you. Wow. Um, <laughs> and that's okay. You can totally have that opinion. Did I hate I, Jesus too? I respect <laughs> non-drinkers. Jesus was um, a winemaker, by the way. Yeah. So once. He made was, wine once. Yeah. It was a little So how many feet are you in walking distance? 482. <laughs> because, yeah, so we were, I mean, this was quite the blow. We... We had just, like, really started dumping money into the space to yeah. get it to what it looks like now. And our thought was, like, we need to halt everything until we know if we're going to get this if license approved. This. Right, yeah. because now we're in this five-year-long lease and this, that, and the other thing. And so we tried to find every way to work around it, essentially. And so um, my husband, Eric, and then one of my best friends, her name's Jordan, her husband, Greg, they took a tape measure out and they walked the whole mm-hmm. tape measure from our front door to the church's front door. Um, and they found out it was the 482 feet. My husband went to the sermon. He went to service there. He talked to the pastor. And Oh, what a good guy. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. That's effort, you know. It was, yeah. And I and should have handled community. it. I Don't send a man to do a woman's job. I should have done it. That's <laughs> what I learned. Yeah, I would have just but left like I a appreciated, yeah. bag of dog shit and lit but on fire on the If they church. object... Yeah. If they're the, if they're the type of church to like object to alcohol, then they're probably a little misogynistic. They're so. Southern Baptist, so I think they're really conservative. Uh huh. Um, and the really ironic thing is we have two bars next door. Oh, look at that! Yeah, two full, bars, full bars that are closer, like dive bars, like bar bars, significantly closer. Yeah, so we have Boomer's Bar and Grill, which is a wonderful establishment. I love both of them. I frequent both of them. Yeah. Um. Boomers is great, technically family friendly, but then next to it we have a bar called Green City Saloon, and it is more of a dive bar, okay. karaoke. You know, close it down by oh, two a.m. Yeah. on the weekend. Oh, yeah. Super duper fun. Um, but of the businesses in our area, I'm not necessarily the one promoting over service. Okay. So that's mm-hmm. where like the yeah. hypocrisy. Kind You're of... like the classy one out of them. Yeah, thousand percent. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna. S- yeah, go suck it. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's weird. Totally. I mean, From like a Christian perspective, that's just weird. Because I'm, I used to be an assistant pastor and yeah. I'm a Christian. That's just a weird. Shocking, thing Shocking, I know. That's just a weird thing to me. I yeah. just don't get it. Well, it just didn't feel. But very, I wasn't. Like, that, I was non-denominational, so we're you know? a little more chill and accepting of most yeah. people. Yeah, it was. It was a purposeful objection for the. The sole purpose was to make it harder for us, and they. Did. That's exactly what they said to us. They said, "We know you're going to get the license. We're just doing what we can to make it more difficult." That's kind of fucked up. So it was it a real is. bummer. You're However, they sound like a bunch of Karens. Point. What I have to say about it is, there's no way in hell we would have been ready to open on the schedule we intended to open on, and so it kind of was a blessing in disguise that we could really like get our ducks in a row. Like we were yeah. still, um, yeah. The day of our grand it. opening, we were <laughs> installing a shelf, like a whole. You know, what nine eight eight or nine foot long shelf underneath mm-hmm. so we really had no business thinking we were going to open mid-december but it so it worked out the, the way it did i you know when i start projects i'm always very like oh yeah i can totally do this mm-hmm. in like a couple days yeah and then i I'm like a month deep and I'm like, what the fuck was i thinking <laughs> like yeah. why did i even start this yeah <laughs> Classic case of biting off more than we can chew. Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. And it's going well. It's going really well. Yeah. Our club has more than tripled. Great. Which is super exciting. Fantastic. Yes. Um, it makes it worth it right there. Absolutely. Yeah. So we have a really, really fun group of club members now. Our next release is in two weeks. So tell me about your wine club. Okay. So our wine club is three different tiers. We do three releases per year. Okay. So spring, fall, winter. I think... Uh, is there specific months or is it just like when you can get to it? You know, I'm going to I'm going to try to make them consistent. So what we did this year was October, February, and May. Okay. So that'll probably end up being our schedule uh, moving forward. But when I started the business, I didn't really know if I was going to have to ship wine or if all my clientele yes. would be local. And so that's why I didn't include a summer release mm-hmm. um, just for the purpose just of not having safe. to yeah. yeah, not having to ship. So I think now I'll do an opt-in summer release with our current members. Um, but we have three different tiers. So we do a four-tier, six-tier, and a 
case. So the best way to enjoy the club is the six bottle because there's a lot of strategy behind how we're pairing the six wines together okay. and the regions in which we're sourcing them from and the reason um, that we're sourcing them for the season that we're sourcing them in. So the best way to get the full experience is six bottle. And oh. do you do just like one of each kind of wine or do you do two of each kind of wine or so the is six it going to it's going to vary, but the six bottle is six totally different bottles. Okay. So for winter, we had a sparkling, a white, and then four reds. So okay. seasonally, Makes we sense. had heavier reds. For spring, we have two whites, a rosé, and then three lighter reds. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, so. And is it a mix of international and domestic, or no. how are you doing? It's all Washington wine. It's all Washington. All so Washington you're 100% wine. 100% Washington focused. 100% Washington That's focused. awesome. That's yeah. really cool. Yeah, and I think that's what sets us apart, too, because there's not, there's no other bottle shops in our immediate area in Spokane yeah. Valley. We have a couple of tasting rooms and wineries, but the majority of our bottle shops are either in Coeur d'Alene. Mm-hmm which is about 15 miles away from us, or downtown Spokane, which is a 20, 25-minute drive west of us. And what sets us what sets us apart from all of those shops is that we're only focusing on Washington. So yeah. um, those shops have um, a pretty heavy influence of international wines as well because they have the market for us, for it. But I'm really, really hoping to... Again, it's the relevance. Yeah. It's what's most relevant to my daily life and the state we live in, of course, mm-hmm. and our local economy. And so that's what I want to be. Um, I want to disseminate that information and that knowledge and that passion to people that you don't have to find wine from all over the world or all over the United States because we have it right here. Yeah. Why wouldn't yeah. we harness that? Yeah. You know? um, that's really, I really like that. All right, let's take a break for a minute because Jazzy has got something to tell you. All right, let's talk about it. So did you know we do have extra episodes on Patreon? What? And you can only get these for $5. What? Yeah. That's crazy. I know. Dope. So go to Patreon. Link is in the description of the episode. And subscribe. $5. You're supporting us and you're getting to learn more about the wine industry. Let's go. Woo! All right, all right, all right. Guess what? I think Ian has something to tell us. I do, I do. We got some merch going on right now. We got hoodies. Say what? We got handbags. No way. We got stickers. What? We got tank tops right now for the summertime. Ooh. Hell yeah. We got some windbreakers too. So oh, go shit. to bungpod.store and get your Bung Pod merch. Yeah. Baby. I mean, it's nice to try other places, but at mm-hmm. the same time, to know your area is also good. It's yeah. also important. So there was a uh, Substack article that came out from Patrick Capiello. He's, uh, I don't know if you know who he is, but mm-hmm. he was a huge influence in the wine community. He's a sommelier. Mm-hmm. Was a sommelier uh, in New York Mm -hmm. and moved to Sonoma, and now he was working with Pax in Sebastopol making his own wine, and he's a big voice in the wine community Mm -hmm. in the United States and um, somewhat globally, but he he wrote the Substack article about the case to drink American wine Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. of we're kind of in a wine recession right now for Mm -hmm. purchasing and drinking. there are a lot of theories on why that's happening, um, but one of his one thing that we brought up is we decided we were going to choose five wineries you should drink right now, and we couldn't you couldn't double up. Okay. So if you had five Washington oh, no. wineries, okay, that you would put you on the spot. Okay. That you drink <laughs> now. Yeah, that you would uh, recommend. For people, what are your top five? I feel five? the pitter patter, yeah. you guys. We should add it <laughs> okay. to our websites too, so people okay. can yeah. go check it out. I don't have to rank them in order of. No, it doesn't no. have to be in order. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I think I remember mine, and I remember some of yours too, so I can, okay. yeah, after I you're I, done, I could. Yeah, let's cross reference yeah. when we're done. I'm, I'm sure, sure they're all the memory different. to remember all. Yeah. I did some in California as well. I had yeah. started making wine in California, so okay. I oh, came I, up here yeah. two years ago. Okay. Yeah. Oh, this is hard. Okay, in no particular order. No yeah. particular order. All right, my first recommendation would be Upside Down. Oh, yeah. love them. Absolutely nice. love 
what they do and watching them um, from when they started yeah. the upside down label until to what they are today has been really fun. They're friends of ours from college. Mm -hmm. So oh, nice. yeah, we were drinking like Kitsky wine, which yeah. um, Seth's parents. Yeah. Yeah. That's their label. Seth and I have had a lot of back and forth. Yeah. We're trying to get him on the pod, but I want to do it in person with him. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So we were drinking Kitsky wine in college as college students. Anytime. Well, we now were, we like, know who's name to drop with. when we. <laughs> oh yeah. Reach out to them. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I, I love everything they do. That's the type of winemaking style I gravitate towards personally. And so we were club members with them for quite a while. So we have a lot of their wine. Okay. Upside down. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Um, this is, <laughs> nice. I'm feeling the pressure. I'm starting to get really nervous. Um, okay. Upside down wine. Because it's kind of covering all the bases of ingenuity, low intervention, Rhone varietals, mm -hmm. right? That you have some of those daily drinkers like the Rescue yeah. Rosé, but you have the bottles that you can sell or like the Lalonde. I think it's a Cab Sauv, Lalonde Cab Sauv, mm -hmm. um, or the Devil is a Liar. Okay, so it kind of covers all your bases with Upside Down. Um, oh, man, this is hard. There's, yeah, there's I know. A, it's really hard. Oh, my gosh. Okay, I have to say Tiridus. I'm uh -huh. a big fan of Bubbles. Yeah. Okay. Um, they just did a pouring at my shop on Friday. And oh, fun. every time we're in Prosser and we're in their tasting room, we have the best time. Um, and they're making traditional method Bubbles. Yeah. And what they're coming out with in the near future is so fun. Um, they just have that. You know, a lot of what we're hearing in the wine industry right now, especially in Washington, is like Rhone varietal, Rhone varietal, yeah. Rhone varietal. And they're kind of like, fuck that. We're going to focus on Washington and what Washington Washington can yeah. do. And so I really appreciate that. I think they have yeah, a totally different comparing. perspective. Yeah. And so they're, again, harnessing like what we have available to us and making it really cool. And if you're a bubble drinker, you kind of always better. have a Champagne's my blood type, baby. That's yeah. right. A champagne. Yeah. Yeah. Champagne yeah. throat goat. Champagne throat goat over here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I have two there. Um, oh, man. This is hard. This is really, really hard. I want to say Smoky Row Cellars, of course. That's a no-brainer. What is even, it? Smoky Row Cellars. I've never heard of this. Yeah. Okay. Let me tell you about them. Smoky Row Cellars, <laughs> yeah. Walla Walla Valley. So Josh and Jody are the owners. Um, okay. Josh is the winemaker, and he was a meteorologist in oh, the Air Force okay. for 25 years before he wow. retired. And they moved um, their family from the Midwest to Washington to pursue wine. And when I say the family, like, his parents moved too. So his parents are always in the tasting room. They okay. have these oh, lovely fine. little photo albums every year that they put together. So charming. And um, his sister, Amy, is a co-owner in the business. Cool. And she is one of six. She just retired from the Marine Corps. Oh, so wow. veteran owned um, across the board. And she was one of six Cobra pilots. Um, so one of Damn. six female Cobra fighter pilots so in the world. So she's fucking badass. Wow. She's badass. She'd she, whoop your ass. Duh, yeah. Facts. She I'm served. a bitch. <laughs> thousand percent. I'm a bitch. So, yeah, she would. So just, just their story alone, right, is yeah. appealing. And the very first time we pulled up to their tasting room, which was several years ago at this point, we were like, where are we? You know, it's very unassuming from the outside. And mm -hmm. it's kind of a, not a strange area in Walla Walla, but just kind of an unexpected area you'd find yourself in to wine taste. And then you go inside and it's. Truly some of the best wines that I think I've really? ever had in Washington State. And their catalog is expanding to um, varietals I didn't really ever foresee them releasing, which makes it even more fun. Yeah, so we definitely. are still a part of Smoky Rose Wine Club. We'll never get rid of them. They'll have to get rid of us. Cool. You like how I get closer to really make the point? Yeah, <laughs> We're not leaving that club. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Hint, hint to the husband. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to anyone else who wants to listen. Um, okay. So you got upside I've, down. Upside down, Tiridus, Smoky Rose. Smoky Rose. So you got two more on the list. Two more on the list. Okay. Yeah. I'm glad she's naming <sighs> some that we've never had. Yeah, me too. Yeah. That's I've had Tiridus once, and that was... I was visiting my quote unquote sisters. Uh, they're not my actual sisters. I just grew up with them. Mm -hmm. um, but they both live in Spokane now. Okay. Which they're from Portland originally. Um, 
and it was baby shower. Um, and so I went to a wine shop in downtown Spokane cause they live pretty close to there Yeah, and got a Tiridis, uh, rosé and it was fire. So yeah. this was way before your wine shop opened. By the way, I'm just gonna say <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. Otherwise, I would have went there. No worries. Exactly. Go to Tipsy Vine. Yeah, there's <laughs> enough for everyone to go around. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I think this is really, really hard. I'm really struggling, and I'm sorry. I'm no, you we know, love it. Good. We're big here causes. For it. So reiterate the question: If I could only drink five Washington wines, mm-hmm. that's a question, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, then I or think... just like your top five right now, your top yeah. five favorites right now. Okay. It could change tomorrow for all. We yeah. Know. Okay, that's fair. Um, I won't know the difference. I will. <laughs> this is a serious question. She's be like, I lied on the bunk yeah. bomb. Yeah. <laughs> Someone's going to hear this a year later and come to your wine shop and be like, so is your top five still the same? I know, right? <laughs> no, it's just Okay. Changed. So I would be remiss if I did mm-hmm. not mention Cardis uh-huh. because yes. I feel like they were such an integral part of um, – your wine journey. My wine journey. You right. know, they really opened my whole palate up to white wine. And yeah. they are such lovely people. Oh, they're in amazing. Person. Shout and out to the Charlie experience. Macy. Yeah. The experience of being in the Cardis Barn is incredible. Everything they do, their staff <laughs> is lovely. Um, mm-hmm. And I think, you know, they've been in the industry for a long time. So I yeah. don't want to say like they're a winery to watch because clearly they're well established and they have yes. yeah. an incredibly loyal following. But that's one that I, as a consumer, besides being in the industry, I will consistently and always be loyal to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was one of my bucket list wine clubs. They got some stuff brewing right now. Oh, I bet they do. They do. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. Have you stopped by yet? No. Okay. I'm hoping to on the way out <laughs> tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. So that was like a bucket list wine club for me. And when we finally joined, we weren't members for very long before we were in the industry. And then I was canceling all my clubs. So that was kind of a bummer, but we canceled with them. Yeah. Okay. We won't tell them. Yeah. Don't look at me like that. (laughs) I I won't tell them that you kept two. Oh, well, no, everyone knows, Um, but they were also in our very first inaugural wine club. Allocation. Okay. So oh, the cool. Grenache Blanc, hey. the 22 yeah. Grenache Blanc was in our fall allocation. Yeah. So. Fun. Okay. That's number four. And I think number five is going to have to land somewhere in the Yakima Valley. Cool. And this is a newer winery to me. Uh-huh. Okay. So I don't have a ton of history with them in terms of like I do with Smoky Rose or Upside Down or okay. Curtis even. Um, but Core Cellars. Blew me away in the Columbia Gorge. Core? So, yeah. Like C-O-R-E? C-O-R. Okay. Yep. C-O-R? C-O-R. Okay. Yeah. And so I was actually introduced to Core through uh, Crew Selections. Oh, The oh. distributor yeah. I Love work crew. with. Yeah. Yeah. And so I've tasted quite a lot of their catalog, and it I've always carried one or two of their bottles at a time in the shop just because um, they seem to be crowd pleasers for every palate, and I really enjoy them. And to me, that's an experiential winery. So I don't necessarily have a whole lot of story, yeah. you know, to tell people about them like I do some of the other wineries. But when I was uh, driving to Cannon Beach with my mom for spring break, we decided to stop just because I'd had so much of their wine. I wanted to see their property. And it was the most incredible experience. And, oh, good. you know, yeah, it, it that's was. Always, it makes me so happy when you. Yeah. Like, just, actually get to see everything from yes, behind. Yes. So beautiful. Such a beautiful property. Multiple different ways to enjoy their wine in the tasting room. What really sells me is when you greet me before I even step into the facility with sparkling. Mm. And that's exactly what they do at I CORE. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Very huh. gracious winemaker. Interesting. Um, he took us back to do some tank samples. He has an additional label, like a passion project, um, with its own separate tasting room. And so he sent us home with bottles from his label as well. And everything about Core is just really dependable. And it's um, awesome. a wide variety of wines. They make a Malbec. They make a Sauv Blanc. They make mm-hmm. um, Chardonnay blends. They make sparkling, sparkling rosé. So it's like there's something for everyone. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's amazing. Oh, fine. I love that. Yeah. That's cool. There. You have some yeah. stuff on there that I've never heard of, which is great. I know. I'm going to have to log um, into all these Yeah. Now. I'm still new in the Washington wine industry. I mean, yeah. I grew up in Seattle, yeah. born and raised, but then I I moved to Santa Barbara for like 11 years and okay. came back up two years ago. Nice. So, Welcome yeah. back. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. 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 We're way, be- way cooler up here. Mm-hmm. Way cooler. 
Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it gets cold. Oh, don't be a like, bitch. Like, real cold? That it does. Don't be a bitch. <laughs> Santa Barbara is 70 I degrees mean, 70% of the time. I have to say, if you guys get snow here, which I don't really know, do you get snow? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, we so get yeah. shit so silly, tons of right? Snow here. That's we what I thought. We sure do. Okay. Well, we sure do. I just asked a stupid question. Um, but this driveway you have up here? It's a bitch. I have one, too. That's very similar to li- this. And it's we a just, bitch. We just uh, Humpty Dumpty all the way down. Yeah. yeah. Throughout the winter. Yeah. I can see I have a yeah. snowblower. Um, takes, like, it's like every time it snows, in the, if, I have to go to work. If I don't have to go to work, if it's the weekend, not I'm just like, deal. fuck it. I'm going to yeah. leave this here. Yeah. yeah. You well, know? Us too. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. How can we not leave yeah. the house? But yeah. I do share that driveway with an uh, um, older couple, some neighbors. So I do feel guilty. I'm just like, yeah, they're old. I should really just do this right now for them. Yeah. So I will do that. It's yeah. Tough. Give Larissa a little bit more. Behind the scenes. Um, yeah, so it takes me like probably 30 minutes, maybe 45 yeah. to do the whole driveway. Yeah. And also my, depends on how detailed I want to get. Yeah. yeah. No, that's okay. No worries. Um, but yeah. Yeah. So it's a little annoying. It's a lot. But yeah. Yeah. But we have four seasons. Yeah. And beautiful foliage. And you have an incredible view. Yeah, right now I it's know. it's insanely green. It's been raining yeah. a lot, but when it's green like this, I really don't mind it. Yeah. Off and on rain, so. Right. It's beautiful. Yeah, this is like the first spring we've had in like, I swear, years. Mm-hmm. I mean, the first time I came up here, it was in April of 22. And so I got here and we were going to go down to the Tri-Cities and Prosser to for a wine conference is oh, a, yeah. is wine I tech you doing um, that. yeah and so i carpooled with the cardis people to go down there and that morning it started dumping snow mm. so i was at cardis winery at like six in the morning and it was just dumping snow and so me living in california for 11 years i was just like cool i'm gonna get my huge ass carhartt jacket on my sweatshirt underneath my beanie yep. and i was like let's Rookie go mistake. it's snowing and then we drove down, and by, like, noon, we got there at, like, I don't know, 11 or something like that. Sunny. like Hot. Beautiful. Warm. And I just had this big-ass coat on. <laughs> everyone. <laughs> everyone. You're laughing because you, you know that situation. <laughs> yeah. Everyone was dressing, like, so professionally, and I was just, like, there in just, like, a Carhartt long sleeve and a beanie. I was, like, sick. Sick. <laughs> Sick. At least I can play this off as like, yeah, I'm in production, you know, whatever. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a blue collar, <laughs> blue collar worker over here in wine. Um, yeah, it was kind of people were looking at me weird, like, oh yeah, you're the new seller master at whatever. I was like, yeah. <laughs> and the, so every conversation I start off I was like, yeah, I just didn't know like this the snow would go away today. Yeah. You know? <laughs> That's fair. I've been living in California for 11 years, and this is my first time back. So next time. I did, I did pack some other clothes, but we didn't have time to go to the hotel or change or anything like that. You just had to own it. And so I was just like, fuck. Yeah. I just had to, I, I'm just in it. I was just committed. Yep. And yeah. I couldn't take it off the beanie because my hair was wild from the beanie. So <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Insane. Rookie. Anyways. <sighs> yeah, fuck me. Goddamn Cali yeah. people. Yeah. Layers. <laughs> layers. Layers. <laughs> yeah, layers. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, nowadays, just a little bit differently. Yeah, I've acclimated a little bit more. Yeah. 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 So I think my top five was like, it was Jaffers in Santa Barbara. Okay. Um, Carhartt, which that's where I started. Um, That was also in Santa Barbara. And so those are the only two California wineries on my list. Um, I did name drop a few other ones I really like in Sonoma and Napa that don't get as much attention. But... My three for Washington was like Lobo Hills, Two Vintners, and oh. Lateris. Oh no, mine was Lobo Hills was a uh, a special mention afterwards because okay. yeah, I love them. That's right. I love them. It was um, the walls, mm-hmm. yeah, the- and Lateris. And two vintners. Yeah. Yeah. I do love everything they're doing. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. Who? Two vintners. Two vintners? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Morgan, that's definitely an honorable He's great. Yeah. He has one of the yeah. only orange wines I've ever really loved. Mm. Um, 
which is great. It, yeah. He did it out of Gewürztraminer, and it's completely dry. Um, there's no phenolic bitterness at the end. It's just a beautiful orange wine. Yeah. Um, I've had some crazy orange wines that are just so phenolically bitter at the end mm-hmm. that I'm just like the tannin structure yeah. with like a chilled white wine. It just doesn't really <laughs> mix <laughs> well, yeah. you know? I mean, if I had like, you know, like a triple brie cheese with it, then sure. Yeah. Okay, here's my theory about orange wines. Yeah. And- yeah. Allergy Bless season. You. <laughs> yeah. Is um, that bitter quality, it reminds me of what you would use to build a really great cocktail. So I think those are cocktail Like wines. a Negroni? Yeah. Yeah. Or even, you know, I don't know, um, part of the fun of... I guess life in general and what I like to do and be creative. How to be creative is like mm-hmm. creating um, fun mixology and yeah, cocktails yeah. and things like that at home. And so I haven't experimented with a lot of those wines as cocktail wines, but that's what I would use them for. Huh. That's a good idea. That yeah, is a I good like idea. That. Because the bitterness, it's, it just replaces the bitters, yeah. right? So you could make even like something in a coupe glass yeah. with like an egg white and a bourbon or a whiskey or an Aperol or something. Huh? Yeah. Let's go. Makes it frothy and delicious. Okay. Get that foam. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> and, and some protein. Come on. It's a snack. It's a snack. <laughs> it's a snack. Um, huh. I think the only other orange wine that I've really enjoyed was, well, there was a Fiano from Italy that I had once um, at my friend's natural wine bar and wine shop. That was really good. There was also a orange Falangina. Have you had Falangina before? Mm-hmm. Uh-uh. It's another Italian grape variety, uh, more central west coast, I think Calabria. Well, my Italian geography is just leaving me right now. Uh, <laughs> I have not spoken about Italian geography in the longest time, yeah. especially outside of the regions of uh, Piemonte and Friuli in Tuscany, so in Sicily. Yeah. Um, but anyways, it was a Falangina. It was not bitter at the end. It was a it's an Italian focused winery in uh, Paso in Paso mm, Robles, nice. Central Coast, um, and that was just fucking amazing. I was like, I can drink this shit all day. Yeah, this is a porch pounder. Oh, Let's oh. Go. porch pounder, couch crusher. Oh yeah. What else do we say, Larissa? We have a patio one, a patio. Okay. Patio pounder? Awkward silence. You're leaving me hanging here. <laughs> it's all about alliterations with these. It's all it about is. alliterations. Yeah. You yeah. gotta go with it. Porch yeah. pounder, crouch, couch crusher. What else? What else is there? Pontoon pounder. I've heard Pontoon, that pounder. Pontoon pounder. I like that. Yeah. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Boat, uh, uh, boat buzz. Boat, boat buzz. Boat buzz. Just boat made buzz. that. There you go. Yeah. That's free. You're welcome. Uh, (laughs) all right looks like we're at our time for this episode um do you want to drop anything for the wine shop plug plug some stuff sure um okay well Nice. Yeah. You keep putting me on the spot. Oh, I'm sorry. It's literally about you. I know. <laughs> yeah. I'm just, I know. I'm never, yes, I'm never prepared to like plug my own self. Okay. We had our ribbon cutting this week and Larissa in the back was yeah. like, say this, say, say this. this. <laughs> and I'm like, what? <laughs> um, okay. Anyways. <laughs> So the Tipsy Vine, Spokane Valley, Washington, we're a brand new bottle shop. We specialize only in Washington wines, and we want to share our passion with our Washington winemakers and Washington winemaking um, with the rest of our local community. So the best way to get in touch with us, if you're not local, is through our Instagram, which is, I keep saying our, it's me, it's my Instagram. (laughs) And you're great Um, with it. Thank you. The Tipsy Vine Wa, Mm -hmm. or at the Tipsy Vine Wa. Um, Our website is thetipsyvinewa.com. We have a beautiful website um, designed by the Woodshop in Spokane. We'll give a little shout out to them. And if you are local, please come in. We want people to know we exist. That's the hardest part of getting your start as a new business is just people knowing 
that you're there. And we want to serve you as our community. We want to disseminate our passion for Washington wine. So we're open Wednesday through Saturday, noon to six. We do tastings every day of the week. I choose four Washington wines on a weekly basis to taste everyone through. And our wine club is super fun. We have a lot of fun. I'm a lot of fun. Join the wine club, baby. Join the wine club. Join the wine club. Join the yeah. wine club. Um, all socials and links are in the show notes below. So go click that. It'll be the first thing you see. Yeah. So thank you so much, Julia, for coming on the pod. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Love so it. Fun. Yes. Well. And cheers. 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 <laughs> cheers. <laughs> <laughs>